Welcome, family, to another edition of Stranger Thinking Media, where we address the problems of a modern world. So stay tuned. We have an awesome show for you tonight. Today, we're going to delve into the spiritual world again. The created gods, fathers of the Nephilim, the god species. Topics covered, the Yahuwah Elohim, the living creatures, the created messengers, the gods of the nations. Welcome to our channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And most of all, enjoy the show. Psalms 22, verse 6, But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying he trusted in Yahweh. That he would deliver him, let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. The Yahweh Elohim, the eternal gods. Yeah, so today we're going to try to uh, clear up some very, very um, just confused topics. You know, you see it every day, everybody thinks they know who and what God is. They have these terms. And yet everybody is just off on a tangent. And I think that the scriptures are very clear. And I'm going to try to make it make sense to you. You know how they say, make it make sense? Well, that's, that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to make it make sense. But you're going to have to work with me here. Um, we, I, I, can't, I can't help you if you got a closed just a closed mind. You have to come out from, uh, you have to have a paradigm shift. You're going to have to, you know, and I know you've been taught a certain way all your life, but there's a time where it, you have to learn, and this is the time to learn. And so we're going to go to Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, and that's what I always do, go back to the beginning. Because, you know, I always use this analogy. If you shine a laser beam, at the moon, if that laser beam is only a, 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 nano, a nanometer off target when it starts out, it'll miss the moon by 10,000 miles. It's got to be right on target from the outset, from the start. So I want you to really think this through. So if you go back to Genesis 1, uh, verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now that's a key term there because First of all, he's speaking in the plural that it said, let us make man in our image. And there are some scholars, I'll call them scholars because I'm not going to downplay. They studied, you know, uh, the, the scriptures and they studied uh, all sorts of other uh, supplemental, you know, uh, study documents. But it, the, the great thing about the scriptures is that it's spiritually discerned. I don't care how, what your IQ is. It's not designed for high IQ. You know, I can, I can talk about what I think about IQ. <laughs> That's just nonsense, to be honest with you. And people put too much, you know, um, credit and stuff like that. The scriptures are written so that from the greatest to the least, it could be understood. It's not written, you know, to to acad academia where you have to be like what the world considers a genius to understand it. It's written so that everyone has an opportunity to understand. So it's, it's written clearly, concisely, but it's also written in like, I'm not going to call it parables, but uh, um, the language is... It, it evokes images. You know, it's kind of pictographic, if you will. So it, it takes a certain spirit to be able to read it and actually get it. So it's written on several levels. You know, there's the obvious 
outward level. Oh, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. But what does that mean? Can something that is plural produce something, an image that is singular? I'll say it that way. No, a, a plural will have an image of a plural. I mean, that's just common sense. You can't argue that. It's if there's more than one and you create an image to it, and, and I like to use the, the uh, um, a mirror as the perfect imager. So let's just take a mirror. If you, if you stand and look in a mirror and it's just you, what are you going to see? Just you. But if there's more than one and you look in a mirror, you're going to see more than one. So he created the male and female. There's more than one. And let's look at the actual Hebrew words. And the Elohim, the, the mighty one, said, let us make Adam in our image after our likeness. Now, there's so much to that because you have to understand that, and I'm going to just tell you plainly, there's the eternal gods, and that's what Yahweh means, the name of the living God, the name he gave, he told Moses, when Moses asked him on Mount Sinai, what is your name? Because the people will surely ask me, what is the name of our mighty one, or Elohim, right, Or, or El, right? And he said, Basically, tell them, Ahaya, Asher, Ahaya, I am that I am. And then he comes down the mountain and, and they ask him, Well, Moses, what is the name of our mighty one? What is the name of our Elohim? What is the name of Eloheinu, right? Our God, our mighty ones. And he says, Yahweh, which means he is. He's the third person, right? So, yeah, because you wouldn't say his name, you know, what's his name? Oh, I am. <laughs> so you, you kind of, it's not correct to put it back in the first person because you're not the one that spoke it. So he puts it in the third person. He is. So throughout the scriptures, they say Yahweh. And, of course, King James translates that word consistently as Lord, except in about three places where he translates it Jehovah, right? Which is basically trying to get back to Yah Yahuwah, right? There is no J in Hebrew, and there was no J in English until 1550, so it was never Jah. It's not Jah. It couldn't be. It's impossible. It was Yah, right? So Yahweh, meaning he is, that's the name of, of, of the mighty one of, of uh, Israel. But Elohim is plural. So who are the mighty ones? And, and, a, and a good English translation, and I'll, I'll call it more of a transliteration of the word Yahweh, so that we understand. Yahweh really means the eternal, meaning the ever-living. I just exist, the self-existent one, without beginning of days or end of days. I No father, no mother, I just am. So a good English way of saying it would be the eternal. So what's the name of our mighty one? Our mighty ones, right? Oh, the eternal. But it's plural, so it would be the eternals, right? So you have to look at it that way. There are two eternals, and those two eternals and it's really simple to figure it out because, in, and the book of John is the perfect book to go to to put this all together. I mean, you can go to Proverbs where they talk about wisdom, which also puts it together. But basically, there are these two eternal beings, and it says in the book of John, uh, in the beginning was God and the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. So the Word, by then it's written in Greek, right? So it's the word logos, which actually denotes an entity, not just a W-O-R-D word, you know, an alphabetic word. It, it's, it denotes an entity. 
just like wisdom in the book of Proverbs, is denoting an entity that existed with God from the beginning. It tells you that. They're talking about the same thing. So this English messes you up because we use this term in English, God. So I'm going to try to put it more in Hebrew terms. So in the beginning was Yahweh. So look at John. In the beginning was Yahweh. And uh, Yahweh was with God. Was excuse me. Yahweh was with Yahweh. Are you, that might sound weird, but remember, Yahweh just means the eternal. So how about I put it this way? So Yahweh, the Father. So in the beginning was Yahweh, the companion. Was with Yahweh, the Father. Does that kind of make more sense? So what you have is two eternal beings. But but no, wait a minute. What about monotheism? But there's only one God. See, there's that word God again. You have to get that. You, you, you cannot understand what the scriptures are saying if you keep going, if you lock onto this English word. This English word, it's 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 not right. It doesn't it's if you actually look up what the word God, G-O-D, means, it's kind of crazy. I'm, I'm not going to go into it in this video, but you have to understand Elohim, the mighty ones or the powerful ones, is plural, right? And many scholars say, oh, there, that means is, is God and his angels. No, it's not God and his angels. That comes later. And we're going to talk about that too. But in the beginning... Because a billion angels, number one, the scriptures never say angels were created in the image of Yahuwah, the creator of heaven and earth. It says that man. So if the angels were part of that Elohim in the beginning of Genesis, then are they saying that men were created in the image of angels? No. They're specifically talking about two eternal beings creating an image of themselves in Adam and Eve. So Adam and Eve together are the image of the Elohim. Adam by himself would be the image of Yahweh the Father, and Eve would be in the image of Yahweh the Companion, or the Word. But they together were created in the image of the Elohim, the plural Yahwahs, the plural Eternals. Okay? And that's something that churches are not going to teach you. What they're going to teach you is something they explain it away either through multiple angels or they explain it away through the Trinity. And that teaching literally keeps you from learning anything else. If, if you, if you, if you just say Trinity, okay, it dies there. You have to get past these terms. These terms are not in the scripture. And then you'll have people argue, well, so what? It's not in the scripture. You know what I mean. No, stop putting words in the mouth of the Most High. He's telling you, don't add your own words. Stop that nonsense. Trinity's not in the Bible. They're not three gods three separate gods that act that's not what's in there it's specifically if 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 you take that view that there are three then why wasn't it uh in the image of you know if there's three of us then there should be three atoms or adam eve and steve you, you follow that's a perversion and that's satan putting that perversion out there having you think that there's three. So everything Yah tells you, everything the Most High tells you, there's an evil spirit that comes in and sabotages it. Unless you dwell in the Ruach HaKodesh and you can see clearly. And so that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. If you can't get this one principle down, nothing really makes sense after this. You have to get this principle down. Just like it's written in the book. When they destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, that uh, Yahweh called down fire from Yahweh in heaven 
So Yahweh on the ground, who appeared as an angel to Abraham, right? Yahweh on the ground called down fire from Yahweh. He got on that walkie-talkie. <laughs> he called down. He said, "Hey, we got light out. You you can uh, send. You can send the heat now." That's what it's trying to tell you. And this sounds so foreign to you because nobody's ever told you this. You're stuck in these denominations that are telling you something that's not right. These shepherds are leading you astray. I'm telling you. I'm not saying they're doing it necessarily, um, you know, knowing that they're doing it wittingly because they were trained by people who taught them this thing. And, and you know, when you have respect for persons, for the Most High has is not a respecter of persons. You know, that term is overblown, respect, right? What is respect? Are, are, you, are you saying you're God? No, it's just men playing God. You better show me respect. Everybody wants to be treated well. That's different. But no, stop respecting people and, and pick up a book and read it for yourself and discern whether what I'm telling you is correct. Because John is telling you the same thing. And then for people who don't get it, when he's, we're going to get into it some more, but it says the worlds were made by the one they colloquially call Jesus Christ. The worlds were made by him. What does that mean? Who is this guy? He tells you. He tells you in several places. Before Abraham was, I am. He's telling you who he is. He's in the flesh, but he tells you, the spirit of the Father is in me. But then he tells believers, my spirit is in you. And then he says, me and the Father are one. Then he says, me and the believers are one. So that's a mathematical principle, syllogism, right? So if A equals C, A equals B, and B equals C, well, that means A equals C. The whole point is everybody is one in the, uh, as Elohim. That's why Yah created man. And that's why the angels are so angry and so pissed because they don't have the ability to create families. What they did was take on human form. And yes, angels can take on human form. That's the part people are just not getting. Just like when they came to sp- speak with Abraham, He offered them dinner, and they ate because they were in human form. They can do that. And we entertain angels unawares in human form, but they're angels. Be careful how you treat people. You don't know who you're talking to. You might be talking to one of God's holy ones. So my point is you they have the ability to turn into human form, but when they do that, When they do that, they're now subject to the weaknesses of the flesh. So when the watchers decided, well, I don't know why the father did not give us the ability to create our own families. He didn't, why didn't he create us in his image also? Uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll make ourselves look like men and then we'll impregnate these human women. That's what happened. Because they want, we noticed, remember, it's not this great struggle between good and evil. It's not these evil angels trying to overthrow the Most High. What does it say? I will be like the Most High. That's what they're looking for. And they're jealous of men who were created in the image of the Most High. Created he them, male and female. Cre- created they them, male and female. Get it? Elohim is plural. And they're not talking about angels. Because it says the worlds were made by King James, right? King James, not King James, but the King James Version, by Jesus Christ, for Jesus Christ. So who, dang, who is this guy that could do that? And he, he walked among us. Because in his spirit form, that was what he was. He was the companion. All things are created through who? Eve. By what? The power of the Holy Spirit does what? What does the Holy Spirit always do? It indwells in believers, begetting, begetting God life in you. 
So the so the I'll, I'll say Yahweh, the companion, in a in a, in a weird sense, is the create it, just as Eve creates the child, but she's empowered to create the child through something the male imparts to her to create that child. Same thing. All things physical were created to mimic something spiritual. Something that flows from the Most High is able to indwell and beget. And the word beget is also a term used for conception. To conceive, the Holy Spirit will conceive God life in you. If you don't accept the Holy Spirit and God life is conceived in you, well, what happens to, the, to a woman every month if her egg is not fertilized? It gets flushed. Every 28 days, it gets flushed, unless it's fertilized. That's just a physical principle. Stop thinking the physical came before the spiritual. This, this, the physical is just a shadow, a three-dimensional representation of a four-dimensional world. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? So these principles we see on earth that we have so perverted, by the way, um, are, are, are representative of spiritual things. Something flows from the Most High and empowers Yahweh the Companion. So Yahweh the Father, something flows from him. It issues from his throne. It always talks about it issuing doesn't that sound like, you know, I don't want to say it, but if, if you just look at the terminology, it flows. It issues from the Father, the Spirit that empowers the Word or Yahweh, the companion, to beget creation, to beget other things, to beget the universe, to beget the earth, to beget the animals on the earth, to beget mankind. So it's this thing that flows from the throne of Yah, the Father, that empowers Yah, the companion, to essentially give birth to, to the universe or whatever. And I'm, those are just, I'm just using those terms. I'm not saying it happened exact, exactly like that, but I'm trying to get you to think more in spiritual terms. Stop thinking the Holy Spirit is some third party. And we're going to get into that in this video. So I'm going to move on because I'm, I'm, I'm just so I'm trying to get everybody off on the right path. You have to start down the right path before. Because if you vary off at this point, you're not going to get it. It's just not. And you're going to listen to all these religions. and The Most High did not create religion. Man created religion. In Babylon, he used brick for stone. Brick is a man-made stone. That's what religion is. It's a man-made attempt at getting a name for themselves. And let's, we'll talk about that in a minute, too. Getting a name for oneself. Hashem, yeah, getting a name. So, I said a lot there. So, let's look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept, and he, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which, he, which Yahweh Elohim had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Okay, we're, we're about to delve into that, into that uh, you know, thought process where understand the Most High does not, create Eve from the dust of the ground because there's a lot of dust. He could have created a ton of atoms out of the dust, but he created one. And instead of creating Eve out of the dust, he creates Eve out of the man. Wait a minute. So the two, she was always part of the man. She comes out of the man not a separate creation, not a creation at all, just something coming, taking out of the man and formed. 
So the the Elohim, the eternal ones, the eternal Elohim, the Yahweh Elohim, are telling us a story about themselves. Because when it says, how, how can the, he says, Adam, it was not good for the man to be alone. So at some point in time, there was Yahweh, the not father yet, <laughs> right? Yahweh, let's call him Yahweh one. And he was by himself in all existence. And he, he took from himself and out of himself, part of himself, to be a companion. So that would be Yahuwah. So it's not that Yahuwah the companion was created. Yahuwah the companion was always within Yahuwah the, the Father. Okay, so Yahuwah 1, out of Yahuwah 1 comes Yahuwah 1A. Because he's building something. He's creating something, right? Not, not that. He's not creating Yahuwah 1A. That comes out of him. He kind of cell divides, if you will, because he's got a plan. He's going to build something. And then um, in the physical, he's showing how he does this on the physical plane. He's telling the story through Adam and Eve. So out of Adam comes the woman. So she was always with him. What is the same Proverbs? Wisdom was always there. She, she was there from the beginning. And there is actually no beginning for the, for the Eternals, but wisdom was there. So wisdom has always been there. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, if you follow my point. So if you're with me this far, <laughs> I, I got a doozy coming at you. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get even more intense. But I need for you to be with me that far. At least understand me. Whether you agree or disagree, at least understand where I'm coming from. So don't, don't harden your heart as in the day of provocation. Listen to what I'm saying and see if it makes sense. Genesis 2, chapter 23, and Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She is one with him. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So the word, according to John, was with God, but the word was God. The word came forth out of, using that term, God, in the book of John, or I like my terms better. So out of Yahweh, the eternal, out of Yahweh one, comes Yahweh one A, not a creation, part of himself, comes out of him just as part of Adam comes out of him and now he has a companion he's retelling his own story and he wants you to understand it because he wants you to get to a place where you understand the whole plan and it ain't you die and go to heaven and float on the cloud playing the harp for eternity that's not the plan you have to understand and I'm trying to get you there slowly so this is this is my Take on how it starts, right? So you got to get this part down to continue on, right? So in, uh, well, let's read again. Uh, verse 23, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man or Adam. Verse 24, here's the key. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his woman, his wife, and they shall be one, one flesh. So when, uh, I guess when the rabbis were up against, you know, fighting all sorts of factions, and they were adhering so tightly to a monotheistic uh, belief system, well, that's also a man-made term, monotheism. What does that, what is that? I, I don't like these terms. Get rid of them. Let's read what the scripture says. The two shall be one. So what these scriptures are saying, that two can become one. Right? So when you read the, uh, the when they read the uh, prayer, that what we colloquially call the Shema prayer, 
You know, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Yeah. But here it says two can be one. And nowhere in any of this is it talking about a threesome. Are you, are you picking up what I'm putting down? It's not talking about some trinity. It's not talking about God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's telling you that Father Yah sits on his throne and there's visions showing the spirit emanating from the throne. And I'm trying to say it nicely. There's something emanating from Yah that begets life or creative acts in his companion. Well, there's something that issued forth from Adam that, gave, that put life inside of Eve. Everything physical is, is a, a, a shadowy copy of something spiritual. Now, if you just have to get past the, uh, you know, the man-made, like, uh, you know, man-made perversion, if you will, but everything created was good for a wholesome purpose, for a holy purpose. And whether we have uh, destroyed it and made, and made it perverse through our own uh, iniquity and lawlessness, that's on us. That's our sin. But it was created good for a purpose. So, and if you read the scriptures, all through it is talking about, notice, just think it through. He talks about the children of God. You become the children of God, the begotten of the Most High. Be, begotten, the word is conceived in its, in, its, in, its, uh, in its original, well, in its Greek language. Begotten, conceived, uh, gestation, partration, right? It's telling you something, okay? Um, so I guess we'll move on. Right, hopefully that's sunk in a little bit. I want you guys to follow what I'm putting down here. Picking up what I'm putting down and following my point here. So John 10, we're going to talk about it. Let's talk about it. So in uh, verse 29, my father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Here we go. That's that concept again. It's all throughout the book, or I don't like to say book. It's all throughout the scriptures, right? Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Turns out at that time, that was a pretty common concept. Everybody knew of the concept of the two powers. It wasn't a weird concept. It was kind of a common knowledge. That concept that monotheism comes later to to refute um, these new, uh, I guess you want to call them offshoot religions like Christianity, uh, Gnosticism, right? Now, Gnosticism is a whole other story. I I've talked about that at length, and I got to tell you, I see more stuff on, on, on YouTube about, uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, I saw it like this. Oh, Yahweh is Satan, or Yahweh is the devil, or, and I'm like, you know, that's Gnostic teaching by the way and it's because they're they're trying to make sense of the deep diving into the stuff i'm talking about now and in their minds the only thing that made sense you have to assume that well the god of the old testament is the evil god he's actually the devil and the, and jesus is actually the good god and so they get all screwed up the devil just infiltrated them and just put them on a treadmill, you know what I'm saying? So, no. Any law of physics becomes a law because it holds true everywhere. You follow? Now, some things might hold true here and there, but like the, in the case of the Trinity, if you understand Genesis 1, they're not talking about three people. They're talking about two people, Adam and Eve are in the image of the Elohim. Together, they form the image of the Elohim. And the Elohim are Yahuwah 1 and Yahuwah 1a. So when it says, 
Adam was created in the image of Yahweh, that's true. But Adam and Eve were created in the image of the Elohim. The two Yahwahs together form the Elohim, which is plural, right? Us. Let us create man in our image. Hopefully that's making a little sense there. Um, and if not, I, I, I would love to talk to you about it. And I don't mean argue with you. Let's, we can sit down and we can talk. Because this works everywhere. You follow? I mean, you follow? It's like, a, um, again, I, and the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. There's the Lord and the Lord again. And the Lord called down fire from the Lord in heaven and rained it upon Sodom and Gomorrah. There's the Lord and the Lord again. It's never... The Lord, the Lord, and the Holy Spirit. And we're going to talk about that because it means they're in black and white. And I can could, I could point it out in, in other scriptures too. The Holy Spirit is not some separate thing. You just got to keep in mind. Right now, Hamashiach, the Messiah, is a spirit. The Father is a spirit. They're both holy. So, again, that mathematical principle they're holy and they're spirit, and that means they're the Holy Spirit. Yes. And like I say, they always talk about the spirit that emanates from the throne of the Father. But we're going we're gonna to get into that a little more just so you, you're kind of clear on where I'm going with this. Stop thinking the Holy Spirit is some separate thing. And I can show you that. I only picked this one instance because I, I just, I think it's kind of, to me it's clear. Um, but let's let's take a look, and, and maybe it'll be clear to you, uh, maybe not. But I'm going to keep trying, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of this opacity and try to get this crystal, crystal clear, right, in your mind. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, just like Eve was members of Adam's body and of his bones, just like Eve. And Adam said, ye are flesh of my flesh and bone of my bones. Christ says his kodeshim, his, his select called out body or believers are his body, just as Eve was part of Adam's body, just as the word or Yahuwah the companion was part of Yahuwah the father's body at some point. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, we talked about that, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one. Here they, they, they say it again. Are you not getting it? Two, joined in perfect har harmony, in thought, mind, mind, and action are one. This is a great mystery. He's even telling you. I'm telling you something that for ages people just haven't gotten it. Still to this day, they don't get it. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the Kodeshim. I don't like that word church because church just simply means circle. I did a video on that. Go watch that video on uh, what is the church? The word church just literally means circle. And King James did that. He insisted that that word be in there instead of called out assembly, which would be a better translation. Because called out assembly denotes people. Church literally means ultimately a facility. And understand King James was a Freemason. And he insisted that be in there because circle is one of the most sacred symbols in Freemasonry. And so when they talk about uh, the church, that's, that's, that means a building, basically, in, in this case. So he's leading you away from a called out assembly of believers to a word that literally means circle which for the Freemasons, ultimately a building, okay? 
I'm not going to get too deep into that because I got another video that goes all into that. So just, uh, you know, um, go through go through my, all my playlists. Go through my series. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Um, and this isn't the first time I've touched on any of these topics. But, you know, you see more and you see more and you, and you try to come from a different angle with it. And so after a while, all the angles are covered. And you see it. And that's all I'm trying to get you to do is see it. We're going to go to John chapter 14 and verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. Uh Uh-oh. Now this is going to get deep. Because we're going to refute the so-called, I can't even call the Trinity a doctrine. Because it's the number one. It's not just that the word is not in the in the scriptures anywhere. It's just that people don't don't even care it's not in there. Well, you know what I mean though? It's God is three in one. Listen to me. Peep this. So in verse 18, right? I will not. This is Hamashiach talking. I will not leave you comfortless. Comfort? Hmm. Could he be talking about the comforter? He says, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father. I am in my Father, but ye, you, are in me. So if you're in me, and I'm in him, you're in him. It's just physics, or something, I guess physics. <laughs> but you get the picture? He, he uh, let's keep going. Just, fo- just focus. Read what it's saying. I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. But he also says he's in the Father, and the Father's in him. Meaning, you know, you're just uh, twined together. Uh, un, it cannot be broken apart. You're just one. You know what I'm saying? That's what he's trying to get at. He that hath my commandments, for all you people who think the commandments have been done away with. And be careful of translations because when they say the law, what they're saying is Torah, which me- literally means instructions. You mean to tell me that the Most High's instructions have been done away? No. He hath my commandments and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Wow, that's, that's beautiful. He's talking about perfect oneness. And he says, I will not leave, leave you comfortless. But then he says, I will come to you. And he also says in another place, if I go not away, the comforter won't come. Why is it that he has to go away for the comforter to come? He's telling you, I will come but I first must divest myself of this flesh and become what I once was aforetime, except now being born through the line of David as a male. I am the firstborn of many brethren. Notice many brethren, but we know in in the Hebrew custom, the firstborn is special, right? He's the one that openeth the womb. And he gets what? He gets the blessing and the double portion. That's why he had to be born in the flesh as a male. Right? And then born, what, by being born to a woman? No, he says born by resurrection from the dead. The first. The first one born from the dead, right? To everlasting life, that is. So, it says, and also the firstborn of many brethren. Do you not now understand what your incredible human potential is? 
He's just saying he's the first of many brethren. And your resurrection is yet to come. And then what does it say he does? He ascends into heaven and he sustains the universe. And yet he says, I am just the first of many. So when you're resurrected, what will your job be? Do you ever think about that? Probably not, because you probably think you die and go to heaven and sit on the harp all day, not getting fat, because <laughs> you're not eating, right? Because you're, you're now an angel or something. Does the Bible ever say that? No. Nowhere in there. You can read it cover to cover, and you'll never see anything that says, oh, humans die, go to heaven, and become angels. It's nuts. Stop it. Stop. Stop. Get a cup of coffee. Stop the madness. Think it through. He calls you his children. I mean, how how much plain how plain does it get? Unlike the angels who call who are called the sons of God, yeah, they're the sons of God. That's the that's the other family. <laughs> but they were not created in the image of the Elohim. This family is special. And as you read on, you'll realize there was a point where the Most High told the angels to bow down to Adam. Just think, I call it the Bruce Wayne effect. Yeah, when Bruce Wayne's a child, he's ministered to by Alfred the Butler, which corresponds to the angels. But when Bruce Wayne grows up, he's the inheritor of the estate. He's Bruce Wayne. Alfred works for him, right? Same principle. And there are some angels that just don't like that thought. Some of them, they decided, you know, the Watchers decided we want to create our own families. And they were not created for that purpose. They are not created in the image of the Elohim. But mankind is. Even in, even though man, what does is, what is the psalmist say? Were, was created a little lower than the angels. His potential is infinitely greater than the angels. As powerful as, powerful as the angels seem to us now, that's how we're going to seem to them at some point in time. So understand. So there were certain angels that did not like the thought of bowing down to Adam. See, God was uh, Adam was created to be Essentially, God here on earth. And to, to spread. He was in the Garden of Eden, but the whole earth was to become Eden. And Eden is like, a, if you will, a portal between worlds. It's a meeting place. It's like, it's like a foyer in your house. That's the entrance. You know what I'm saying? And then he fell. So he had to send the second Adam. The first Adam, and then the second, a life-giving spirit, the Holy Spirit. Okay. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. So just remember that before you go saying, oh, the commandments, and I know what some people say. Well, he wasn't talking about the Ten Commandments or the 613 Commandments. <laughs> He's just talking about love everybody. Yeah. Well, if you, if you read certain things in a vacuum, except that he says, um, I think not, think not that I come to do away with Torah or the law. But it's Torah. That's the Hebrew, right? The instructions. Think not. And you know what? People missed the boat, and instead of listening to the rest of that statement, they stopped at think not. So they're not thinking. Read the whole thing. Think not. And does when he says, I came to fulfill, what is, why do you think fulfill means do away with? Or is he saying, I'm just going to fulfill it, meaning I'm going to walk it perfectly. I'm going to show you what happens when you walk this walk perfectly, right? 
And because if you keep, like I said, nothing's in a vacuum, you have to realize if you think the law was done away with, then there's a whole lot of other stuff that doesn't make sense. Because how could there be sin without Torah? I had not known sin except by Torah or the law. Okay? What is sin? Sin is transgression of Torah. It's telling you this all through the book. So you're saying all of a sudden it's done away with? Even though it's telling you? Even in the second to the last verse in the entire Bible, is it, oh, these people are without the kingdom. You know, people who are liars and murderers and adulterers and Wait a minute, I thought all that was done away with. You're just, but you're reiterating it at the very end of the book. So you can't say, oh, that was then. No, at the second to the last, like I believe the second to the last verse in Revelation, yeah, and these are without the kingdom. Uh, those who make lies, you know, adulterers, uh, blah, 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 blah. He's kind of reiterating the commandments, basically. So what is he telling you? And that's on purpose. You cannot say the commandments are done away with when, the, like, <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, deathbed confession, uh, confession. The last words out of your mouth are probably true, <laughs> you know, because you got nothing to lose at that point. I'm just saying, if at the very end of the book, he's basically saying, yeah, the people who are not in the kingdom are the people not keeping these commandments. So stop it. Stop. You're making it worse for yourself. If you're teaching people, and it also talks about if you, if you teach people to not keep these commandments, what happens to you? You're, le you're killing other people is what you're doing. If you don't want to keep them, that's on you. But don't teach people to not keep them because now, you know, that's an awful lot of judgment you're bringing on yourself. So stop it. Yeah, I guess the commandments are done away with. So it's, it's okay to, you know, here's the perfect, here's a crazy scenario, right? Yeah, it's okay to murder. Well, you, you murder some woman's husband and you commit adultery after you murder him and then you lie to the cops about it. And it <laughs> so what you're saying then, if the commandments are done away with, then all of that's okay. Makes no sense, does it? That's the stupidest thing. Just think about what you're saying when you say the commandments are done away with. You're basically saying, oh, yeah. If the commandments are done away with, then there is no sin. And then why can't I do all these things? You know, if the commandments are done away with, yes, you can do all those things. And what kind of a world would we be in if everybody was doing those things? What if there was no restraint? As well as that scripture, he who hinders will hinder until he be removed out of the way. Then that man of lawlessness, that man of sin shall appear. You know what I'm saying? And that time's coming. So you, you guys, you know, like I say, I mean, we all got our little, uh, <laughs> our little past, sorted little past, but you overcome it through the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. And he says, it is he who is that spirit, not some other guy. Psalm 22, verse 9, but thou art he that took me out of, my, out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Yeah, amen, amen. The living creatures. Okay, so we talked about God, and I don't like using that word because he has a name. His name is Yahweh, and he has a companion. And the two together are called the Elohim, the Mighty Ones, which created Adam and Eve in their image, after their likeness. Wow, that's powerful. When you start really understanding, he's just retelling a story here on earth. Ezekiel chapter 1. We're going to talk about these living creatures because what are they? What exactly are these living creatures? I know it sounds simple. We talk about, uh, well, they're simply, they're just angels. 
No, we're going to do that in a minute. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But let's, let's see the description. There's a key word. Living creatures, right? What's the root of the word creature? Well, the root is create. They are created. Okay, just keep that in mind. Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 5. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, creations. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And everyone had four faces. Sounds like cherubim. Cherubim, right? Cherubs. And everyone had four faces and everyone had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the soles of their feet was like the soles of a calf. They had cow foot, cow feet, <laughs> right? And uh, they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. So these are creations, created beings. But more than that, you're going to see that word again. At the, if you In the Hebrew, you'll see the word again. They're called something. All right. I don't know if I should give it away yet, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see if it comes back up. I think it comes back up. Anyway, Ezekiel 1, verse 12. And they went, everyone straight forward. Whither the Spirit was to go, they went, and they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down, the living creatures. It was like flames going up and down their bodies, right? And the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. So lightning is emanating from them. Wow. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. That's how fast it is. It's at the speed of light. That's their movements. They're at the speed of light, traveling that fast. But I think the, the part that... uh. I guess I, I'll, I'll give you a hint. These living creatures are Elohim, right? But wait a minute. I, I thought, I thought uh, there was just two Elohim. You're saying these, these living creatures are Elohim also? Yes, but you have to remember what the word Elohim means. King James translates it as God, which means nothing. Well, it actually does have a meaning, not the meaning you think. But go back to the Hebrew. What does it mean? Elohim, the mighty ones. So what you're going to find is, is the term Elohim simply means, uh, in, a, in, a, in a way, uh, being superior to man, essentially. Beings that are po more powerful than men, and than humankind, than, than Adam. At least for now, right? So you have here the living creatures created. So these are created Elohim, mighty ones. They, yes, they are mighty. They are created mighty ones. But the Most High is Yahweh Elohim, the eternal mighty one, right? or the eternal mighty ones, he's, his name is a designation separating him from all other mighty ones. Because only Yahweh, can, he, that means eternal, only the, only the most high is eternal. The other Elohim are created Elohim. That's why they call living creatures created Elohim, right? And so you might ask, well, are these um, living creatures different from angels? Now, that's a good question. And so I think you deserve a good answer. And I guess we have to define what an angel is because... You know, that's been twisted. Everything is twisted because there is a, an unseen hand purposely twisting all the truth. And we're going to get to that in a second.
Psalm 22, verse 12, many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. This is crucifixion language. Talking about Christ there. And uh, so now I promised you we're going we're gonna to look at the created messenger gods, angel Elohim. <laughs> Well, it turns out that angel are, angels are living creatures. They are created Elohim, right? But keep that in mind, Elohim. Just remember it just means mighty ones or powerful ones or the powers. But they are created powers, unlike the eternal powers, the eternal Elohim or Yahweh Elohim. They are the living, created Elohim. These angels are. So what's so why do they call them angels here and they don't uh, call them, they refer to those other guys as living creatures, but they talk about angels, don't they? Well, what does angel mean? Is that what they are? Or is that just a description? job description of what they do. So I think um, we we missed the boat. We <sighs> angels an angel literally the word angel literally means messenger. So you have living creatures that have different functions. So some living creatures are messengers. And some living creatures protect the throne of God or Yah. They have different functions, right? So if you understand that the word angel is just a job description, generally associated to these living creatures, you start getting the picture. So an angel is simply a living creature or a created Elohim created mighty one right as opposed to the eternal mighty one Yahweh Elohim right he was not created these others were created by him he's making a distinction does that make sense Psalm 82 verse 6 I have said ye are gods or Elohim and all of you are children of the most high but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes Somebody pissed him off, and he's, he's laying it down. And if you watched the last video, you know he had appointed 70 angels after the Tower of Babel was destroyed. And those 70 captains, those 70 angel captains, were supposed to watch over man. Yah did foreknow what they would do. They would fall, uh, at least a third of them would fall into lust. And fell, just like the watchers fell. And so it says in the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ that they, that the dragon took a third of them with him. Watch that video. I can't go into that now. That, that was like one of the longest videos I did. So I, you just have to watch that one um, to understand what it means that a third of the stars you know, it never says that the dragon took a third of the angels. It says a third of the stars, which could mean other things too, but I tend to believe it does mean, you know, angels. So here we're saying the Most High is calling these living creatures, these messenger creatures. He said, I have said, ye are gods, or Elohim. He's, he's telling you what they are. They are mighty ones. And all of you are the children of the Most High, or the sons of God. But ye shall die like men. He's saying, you that fell away to the dragon, ye shall die like men. So for those people who think that, and I saw enough, oh my goodness. YouTube, YouTube has become a hotbed of just some horrible misinformation. I saw one thing that said, here's why God cannot 
kill Satan. I'm like, he's telling you they're going to die like men, like men. Yeah, he, if you limit the most high, you're not a believer. You, you cannot believe it. You, you're saying that he cannot destroy. Come on, please. You're believing Hollywood again. You, you got that Hollywood religion. You know, what? <laughs> I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to be real here. You guys need to come away from that. Um, I know it's hard cause all your buddies are in that church and you don't want to leave your buddies. I get it, you know, but if your buddies are holding you back from understanding and probably some of you are listening and getting it, but eh, I still don't want to leave my church. Okay. Stay there. But what you probably, and here's, here's the hard part. At some point, what you're going to do as you start figuring things out and start going, you know, that makes a lot of sense. You're going to tell somebody. You know what that somebody's going to do? They're going to run back to your pastor and tell your pastor, hey, he's starting trouble. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. And you'll find yourself summarily kicked out. So, I don't know. Do you go your whole life, if, if you understand what I'm saying, do you go your whole life with this knowledge and not tell anybody? That sounds like that parable where the, the the man, the great man, is going on a trip and he gives each servant um, some money and tells them to invest it. Now, one guy he gave, I don't know, five silver coins and another guy gave one silver coin and whatever. And when he came back, he expected dividends. The ones who invested could give him more back than he gave them. But then there was the one that took that, I don't know, was it a penny, whatever it was. He said, Master, I knew you were a hard man, so I buried it. So here's your penny back, or whatever. And you got to understand, the point of that whole thing is you, you, once you know, you, it is your commission. You, you pull out the goad, you know what I'm saying? The sheep are going astray. You go, wait a minute, I can't let that happen. You have to you know, bring them back to the sheepfold. And once you're convicted in your heart, that's what you do. Now, if your pastor's not, either he's deceived or he's just a wolf in sheep's clothing, there's a lot of that out there. And you know, the wolf just comes to, to, to devour, to scatter and devour, right? And I see those wolves every day. I got to deal with those wolves every day those very selfish wolves that all they do is try to control as line out the Lord of the Rings to dominate all life. Yeah, there's people who feel they have a God-given right to dominate all other peoples. And they've gotten away with it for so long they think it's their right. It's just the natural way of things. And they have a rude awakening coming. Because that is over. And it may not be over. It's just like when uh, Samuel anointed David king. Technically, from that moment, he was king of Israel. It's just that nobody else knew it yet. Same thing. You got people walking around thinking they have some superiority thing going on when the truth is they have been judged. They won't repent. And the judgment is coming for them. It just is. And I don't know if they still have a chance to repent. Maybe, maybe not. But I know there's a prophecy where it talks about the Most High and what his dealings with Edom will be. It's just that he already knows Edom will not repent. And so he pronounces judgment. And what people don't realize is the first thing he's going to do when he comes back is destroy Edom and the power thereof. And that's a whole nother story. So I'm not going to get into that one. But just remember, here in the Psalms, the Most High is pissed at these angels that we're supposed to be taking care of men, and now they're doing the same thing the watchers did. So one-third of them are 
have gone off the reservation and two thirds are left. That's what I believe this means. Or, or excuse me, in Revelations, when it says a third of the stars were dragged along by the serpent, right? So, anyways, um, but that's, uh, you know, you probably never heard any of this, or some of you might have. I know this information's out here. It's not like I'm the only one that knows this. I'm not some magical leprechaun or something. There's a lot of people who know this. It's just that our voices get drowned out by, you know, this is how, this is how the Most High works. The Most High is that little hummingbird, you know. That, like you get up in the morning, a little hummingbird gets in your face sits there for like a couple seconds and you go oh how cute and then it flies off and then you go down the road and you miss an accident by a tenth of a second you know, it's because that humming bird held you up <laughs> you know what I'm saying for a tenth of a second I'm, I'm, using, I'm using that as an example whereas the Satans they blast the trumpets like they force you they they, they're loud you know the most high he, he's calm he's quiet he's hey you shouldn't do that <laughs> but Satan's are like hey you gotta check this out this is the greatest thing ever you're gonna love this he, he's all in your face loud right you know, he's blaring the trumpets but the most high the vo- his voice is quiet very under control very calm you have to drown out the noise in your life to be able to hear it and once you do that, you start hearing it. It starts becoming clear. So I think I'm going to have to go back a little bit on this one. Psalm 78. And he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. What the heck is that about? He's talking about uh, when the children of Israel were in Egypt and the Most High sent evil angels. Now I got to ask you this question. If, if you're not following what I'm saying about the 70 angels that were assigned to men after the Tower of Babel, understand this. He's saying he's sending evil angels. Do you mean there are evil angels up in heaven? No, that just doesn't make sense, does it? Those angels that came down, remember the dragon took a, he convinced a third of them, but they're, they're on the earth. Because remember, he's bound to the earth. So they're with him on the earth. And he took a third of the ones that were assigned to guide mankind. And so he understands that he's still in control of all of it. So what he does to Pharaoh in Egypt, he says, he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending some of those. They, he compels them. They cannot, you know, he's like he's saying, hey, Satan, I'm going to need a couple of your angels. And they can't, they can't say no. He's got the control of everything. And he sent them to slay the firstborn of the Egyptians. I don't, I don't think people understand the power of the Most High. They, they think it's some Hollywood movie, and it's not. It's something far more powerful than that. I don't think our small, limited minds can comprehend the vastness of the infinity of the power and the might of the Most High. He is beyond our, even our compre- comprehension. We, we see darkly as in a mirror. Was, that's what the Apostle Paul said, but we don't see clearly at all. He just gives us snippets to get us in the ballpark. And some of us can't even see that. Psalms 22, verse 15, My strength is dried up like a pot shirt, and my tongue cleaveth unto my jaws, and thou brought me into the dust of death, for dogs have compassed me. Yeah, indeed. Those dogs compassed me every day. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They enclose me every day. And they pierce my hands and my feet. That hasn't happened yet. But I know the feeling. I think a lot of us know the feeling. You try to do right, and the dogs encompass you. Right? 
the assembly of the wicked. But fear not. Your Messiah has overcome the world. Just as time will tell. The gods of the nations, the fallen ones. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the Elohim of the Gentiles. That's essentially what that means. So, what could that possibly be? We just heard Most High can send evil angels, right? So, in my previous video, um, I talked about what exactly is the kingdom of Satan, right? It's an actual kingdom made up of both angels and demons. And we talked about the origins of demons and the origins of the angels that follow, who become Asetan, essentially. And then the inference from the book of Enoch that the serpent that deceived Eve had a name, and his name was Gadriel. That just weirds me out every time I say it. His name is Gadriel. Do you, does that just sound a little off to you? The name of the serpent, or the actually is an angel that deceived Eve, according to the book of Enoch, his name was Godrel. Godrel. Right? Makes you think. What are you praying to? Who are you praying to? You do realize the Most High tells you his name over almost 7,000 times in the 66 books of the Bible, and yet nobody knows his name. Everybody's praying to God. <laughs> anyway. Nobody's praying to Yahweh, right? Don't you see the deception there? In fact, if you even mention it, people get offended. They look at you like you're crazy. You do realize he says his name seven thousand times, and at no point is his name God in that book. Well, King James said it was God. Yeah, King James is also called the called out assembly. Circle, you know, the word church literally means circle. <laughs> the word circus comes from the same root word. The word circuit comes from the same root word as church. They all come from the same root word, and it always means circle. So watch that video, and it'll teach you where, where that concept actually comes from. It's deep, I know. The deception is deep. I don't think we realize how overmatched we are in dealing with the Satan's one-on-one. The only weapon you have, and it's a very powerful weapon, but if you're not using it, it's no good to you, right? The weapon that you have that protects you is your faith and your prayers. You pray. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. That's the promise. How many times a day do you, do you invoke that? Probably never. Some of us do. But you'd be surprised. It was say even even your the most high can even make your enemies be at peace with you. People you know are your enemies have been made to be at peace with you, right? So it's kind of it's a powerful thing. If you had the faith of a mustard seed, you could tell that mountain to uproot itself and throw itself in the ocean. And that's the Faith of a mustard seed, that's like the smallest seed among all the trees kind of thing. And yet if you had a, just that little bit of faith, you can uproot a mountain. So what he's saying, by his faith, did he create the world, right? <laughs> he created all things in perfect faith. So, you know, it gets deep. And uh, it says here, what does it say about these Elohim? Because these Elohim, these created Elohim that re, that rebelled and became known as the Satans. Remember, Satan just means adversary. So the plural would be adversaries. It says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yahweh and served Balaam, which means the Lord. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? So I'm going to say, instead of here, King James says, Lord, in all caps. But the word is Yahweh. That's why I say he says it 7,000 times. King James, and I'm not just saying him. All of these cats were doing it. 
So you got to ask, what was what was uh, the driving force in the spirit of these men that they wouldn't actually just spell out his name? I don't know. It could be they just said, well, maybe the people won't understand what that is, and they need to see this word because everybody knows what Lord is. But it turns out Baal means Lord too. So I'm going to say it right. So Israel did evil in the sight of Yahweh and served the Lord, and they forsook Yahweh Eloheinu, Elo, their God, right? Uh, Yahweh Eloheinu of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt, and followed other Elohim of the Elohim of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked Yahweh to anger. And they forsook Yahweh and served the Lord and Easter. I'm, I'm not making that up, people. That's what that means. So Baal means the Lord. And Ashtaroth is a, the, the words, basically the, the goddess of fertility, Venus or, or uh, um, Isis. Or Ishtar or Easter. I'm trying to tell you something. What are you worshiping? What are you praying to? Are you so steeped in your tradition that you, the truth is not hitting you in the face and you're just not waking up to, oh, I mean, what is holding you back? Come on now. Let's bring it. And so these names are all fallen Elohim, created Elohim. They're actual entities. Yeah, they might create a statue to them, but these things are actual entities. And, you know, when they talk about the gods of Egypt, yeah, they're talking about some uh, actual created entities that uh, rebelled and went their own way. And uh, here you have it. Stuck in a maze. Job chapter 1, verse 6. Now there was in that day a man named Job. Well, I guess that's the end. I will say I love you all so much. And thank you for continually supporting my content. If you did enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. And share this with your friends and family. I'm sure they'd enjoy it and find it interesting as well. I'm very excited to continue this journey with you. I thank you all for bringing certain stories to my attention and for continually keeping me updated with certain events around the world. Because I know a lot is going on. We're in those last days. And I very much appreciate you all. And shout out to the channel members. And may everybody, everybody have a beautiful and blessed day. Who's in the body of Messiah. Yahusha HaMashiach. And we'll see you on the next video. Shalom. Family Shalom.